In this video, we're going to have a look at constructing Venn diagrams. So it says the following shows the results of a survey on the types of exercise taken by a group of people. 65 run, 48 swim, 60 cycle, etc, etc, etc. Draw a Venn diagram to represent these data. Well, a Venn diagram has circles for each event and shows how the three events overlap with each other. So there's three events here. There's running. the swimming and the cycling and these are all contained in what's called the universal set which has this symbol here so we've got running we've got swimming and we've got cycling <clears throat> so now it's our job to fill in the gaps now the best thing to do with this is always to start right in the middle. To start with this bit here. This will make it much easier for us if we fill that bit in first. So let's look for the relevant information that allows us to fill that bit in. Well here it tells us that 25 do all three. So 25 can now go in there. Now it tells us 35 run and cycle. So working upwards 35 run and cycle. So run and cycle is this area here. This is run and cycle, this overlap. In fact, I'll shade it in to make it a bit clearer. This bit here is run and cycle. So that has to add up to 35. Well, that tells us that this region here is 10. Let's delete that now. So that's that one done. 30, swim and cycle. <clears throat> so swim and cycle is this overlap region here, swim and cycle. And that needs to add up to 30. So that tells me that this area has to be 5 to make that add up to 30. Forty run and swim. Therefore, this area here has to add up to 40. So this one must be 15. So now we're told that's 60 cycle. So all of these need to add up to 60. So we've got 10, 35, 40. This must be 20. <clears throat> 48 swim. Well, 25 at 15 is 40. At 5 is 45. That must mean 3 must be there. And 65 run. So 15 at 25 is 40. 50. That must be 15 there. So 100 people were surveyed. Let's... Count these all up now, and let's make sure that add up to 100. So 15 plus 10 plus 20 plus 25 plus 5 plus 15 plus 3 equals 93. They don't add up to 100. That must mean there must be some people that don't do any of the three tasks. Therefore, those three people that don't do anything... I put them outside of R, S and C, but in the universal set. And that's the purpose of the box containing everything. There might be some people that don't do any of the three activities. So that's that done. That's part A finished. Part B. Find the probability that a randomly selected person from the survey takes none of these types of exercise. Well, that's easy. We've already done it. There's our three there on the outside. That's three out of 100. Part C. Swims, but does not run. So we're looking for all the entries that are in swimming, but don't overlap with running. Well, it's those two there. Three and five. So that's eight out of 100. In fact, let's move that up here so we've got more room. And eight out of 100. So we'll divide by four is two twenty-fifths, simplifying the fraction. And D, the probability that they take at least two types of exercise. Okay, so we're looking for anything that involves at least two. Well, this entry here is two types of exercise, running and swimming. This one here, this one here, and this one here is three types of exercise. Therefore, all of those are applicable. 
So adding those all up. So 15 add 10, add 25, add 5. Should be able to do this in my head. I'm being lazy using the calculator here. Better safe than sorry though. So 55 out of 100 equals, so again, better safe than sorry. Let's simplify that in the calculator. 55 out of 100 is 11 out of 20. And then the final part, a conditional probability question. It says Jason is one of the above group. Given that Jason runs instantly, we're going to stop reading because there's lots of possibilities to discount now. We know that Jason runs, so we're going to pretend that nothing else exists. So anything that's not running, we're going to get rid of. So we're going to get rid of that. That's gone. That's gone. That's gone. That's gone. So given that he runs, find the probability that he swims but does not cycle. Well, swimming are these here but does not cycle. So we don't want this 25 here. This is the only one we want. That's swimming but not cycling in the things that are left. So part E, find the probability that he swims but does not cycle. That's 15 out of everything that's left. So let's add them up. 15 plus 10 plus 25. Again, I'm being very lazy. Plus 15. 65, so 15 out of 65. Let's just simplify that. 15 out of 65 equals 3 thirteenths. So when we're finding conditional probabilities, it says given that he runs, just get rid of everything that's not running. You probably don't want to scribble out things in an exam, uh, or if you're going to, at least do it, do light crossings out in pencil so that if you need the diagram later, you can just rub them out. So that's that. For more videos like this, go to alevelmathsrevision.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up at the bottom.